Hey there, welcome back to How to Medicate and welcome to this new awesome video where we will be covering yet another illicit drug. And in today's video, you're really in for a treat because we're gonna discuss the most used one. We're talking 18% of the American population which is using it and worldwide more than 128 to 238 million people. That's a lot of people. Of course, we're talking about cannabis, marijuana, ganja, you name it. And in today's video, we will cover the origin of cannabis, its effects, its potential long-term effects, and the signs of an overdose, and much, much more. So make sure you watch the whole video yourself so you don't miss any important information. You can use this medical information to make healthy decisions. So let's get started. And in order to cover the origin of cannabis, we need to go all the way back on the timeline as the usage of cannabis by the indigenous people of Central and South Asia is almost as old as the recorded history of time. Back then, the indigenous people of Central and South Asia were already burning cannabis for its psychoactive effects. They also used it to make fabrics and robes. Furthermore, if we go further down the timeline, it has been suggested by several scientists that cannabis has been used in ceremonies in certain European tribes. If we fast forward, cannabis was spread from Europe by the Spaniards to North and South America. Interesting is that cannabis was among the first drugs to be prohibited by government. As early as in the 14th century, it was prohibited with a peak in the 20th century. In contrary, however, the Dutch government in 1972 was the first to divide drugs in more and less dangerous categories, with cannabis being in the not-so-dangerous category. Because it was placed in this low-risk category, cannabis was allowed to be used in a coffee shop or at home. By this time, many other governments start to apply the same rules, where cannabis for recreational use is allowed or it even became legal again. So continuing on cannabis itself, it refers to dried flowers, leaves, stems and seeds of the cannabis plant. It can be smoked in a hand-rolled cigarette called a joint, in a pipe, in a water pipe or in a blunt, which is cannabis in a cigar wrapper. It can also be used to brew tea and it can be used to make cannabis oil. This oil can be mixed into food like pastry or it can be eaten plainly. If you smoke cannabis, it is effective immediately and when you eat it, it takes about 30 to 60 minutes. And once effective, it lasts for about one to several hours. Cannabis itself contains more than 500 different substances of which more than 100 tetrahydrocannabinols, also called THC, of which you might have heard. THC is the main psychoactive, meaning mind-altering, chemical in cannabis. It causes the perception-altering and intoxicating effects during the high. Now, THC is effective because its chemical structure is very similar to your body's own anadimide. This is a normal chemical messenger we all have in our brains. This similarity allows THC to bind to cannabinoid receptors in our endocannabinoid system. By binding to those receptors, THC activates them, influencing our pleasure, memory, thinking, concentration, movement, coordination and perception. To keep this video simple but filled with all the essential information, I will not explain all the effects THC can have on your brain in detail, but I will mention the two most important effects. First of all, its effect on your hippocampus and orbital frontal cortex. Normally, these areas enable a person to form new memories and to shift your focus. Usage of cannabis hinders this process, leading to impaired thinking and decreased learning. Cannabis also affects your basal ganglia and your cerebellum. These areas regulate, among others, your posture, coordination and reaction time. Cannabis decreases the function of these areas, creating difficulties when performing physical activities and making driving unsafe. In general, however, the usage of cannabis is associated with many pleasant effects. Among others, euphoria, relaxation, a heightened sensory perception, like seeing brighter colors, laughter, an altered perception of time, and an increased appetite. Unfortunately, the usage of cannabis can also have several negative effects, like a decreased blood pressure, fainting, increased heart rate, dry mouth, decreased coordination, 
nausea, vomiting, memory loss, anxiety, panic attacks, distrust, dissociation, paranoia, and acute psychosis. These negative symptoms are especially common if someone overconsumes THC. So, if you smoke or eat cannabis with a high THC concentration, if you have a very low tolerance for THC genetically or because you never consume it, or if you just plainly use too much, you have a higher chance on experiencing these negative symptoms. Also, very important to mention, if you combine cannabis with any other drug or with alcohol, this can further increase your risk on these negative symptoms. Now, if you do experience any of these severe symptoms of an overdose, it is important that you seek immediate medical attention. However, for the milder cases, it might be sufficient to stay hydrated and to rest sufficiently. Now, these negative effects of cannabis use might be more impactful than you had thought, and you might even reconsider your cannabis use. Well, let me tell you, the best time to quit is today. So seek immediate medical attention if you are thinking that you should quit, because your doctor, he or she, can help you to reduce your marijuana use and potentially even quit. You can do it. Which brings us to the next important topic I wanted to discuss, addiction to marijuana. And its numbers, its statistics are staggering. And for those of you that started using it before the age of 18, these numbers are even higher. Now, if you do quit using cannabis, a person might feel withdrawal symptoms like irritability, mood swings, sleeping difficulties, decreased appetite, cravings, restlessness, and physical discomfort. But don't worry, these symptoms, while annoying, will peak within a week, and for most people, two to three weeks will leave them without any withdrawal symptoms. Lastly, we need to talk about the potential long-term health risk cannabis can cause. It can lead to cognitive decline. We're talking a potential loss of six to eight IQ points, which is massive. Depression, anxiety, schizophrenia, impaired driving, and therefore a higher chance of car accidents, chronic bronchitis, lung and testicular cancer, and in some studies there was also found a connection between the usage of cannabis and addiction to other drugs. However, this connection was not found in all studies, so it is not conclusive. Now, I hope you know now everything you need to know about cannabis. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section, and I hope if you did enjoy the video, you will leave a like or a subscribe to the channel will help out the channel tremendously and in return you will get notified each week with a new awesome video. For those of you that can't get enough, check out the Instagram, TikTok, Facebook and all the other goody good things we have and I will see you next week with a new video. Bye bye.